<laughs> Let's do this. To whom much is given? Much is required. Oh, man, that was kind of like the wild moment. To whom much is given? <laughs> much is required. Much is required. We're going to give you something today, and I hope that you take it, and I hope that uh, God requires you to do what, and you do what you're supposed to with it. Um, go ahead and pull up the, the first slide. I, I was thinking this week what, what I could speak on and, and I get these crazy titles. So the title of today's message is Birth, Birth, Bath, and Beyond. <laughs> and um, the first the first two things that we're talking about are pretty much going to be uh, kind of like, yeah, got that, already know that um, for most of you. And then we're going to jump into um, the beyond. But um, John 3, 3, Jesus replied, Verily, Truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. What a strange statement, right? I mean, this was Nicodemus. This is what Nicodemus had heard. And, and he hears, uh, hey, he says, hey, Jesus, you know, I'm trying to figure this whole, I've got all these Bible rules down. I've got the whole law down. We've got the commandments. We've, we're doing all these different sacrifices and all that. And, but uh, uh, Jesus, I want you to tell me how I'm supposed to get into heaven. And, and Jesus' response back is, uh, unless you're born again. And it's kind of become the cliche in, in our Christianity, right? I mean, every pastor says born again. There's Protestant pastors. We, they, we all say born again. We, we use that terminology. And, and, and to you it might mean saying a prayer. To you it might mean getting baptized. To you it might mean being baptized in the Spirit. It might mean speaking in tongues. There's a whole bunch of philosophies out there what people think it means to be born again. But when, when you really think about it, it means... A brand new start. Amen. It means death to me, life to Him. It means I am crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live. Jesus Christ now lives in me. It means that everything goes... I, I, when I used to talk to the teenagers, I would talk about this and what we try to do in, in, our, in, our, Christian, in our Christian culture, our, our kind of religious culture, we try to kind of give God everything but. God, I'll give you everything but this addiction. I'll give you everything but maybe it's your finances. I'll give you everything but this relationship. I'll give you everything but my marriage. I'll give you everything but. And so we hold on to this one little thing. And, and, and Scripture says to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And, and, and I started thinking, you know what? That means all. And so this born again thing means this born... I want you to really get this. Like I said, this is, this is all old news. You know, this is the church... This is church stuff. The, it means... Give him everything. I um, I spent some time last week, and there's a couple of them that are here. Um, I, I spent some time last week with um, um, M Impact the Valley, and uh, ten years ago I met in in the Riverton Church over in Front Royal with a group of people, and and this lady showed up with this project idea, and she said, Hey, what if we what if we gather teenagers together for a week? Had them uh, come and stay at a campground, and while during the week they went and did uh, different projects and um, for for uh, low income or people that are struggling, and and so that's what they did. Last week they they would pack up in the morning around eight thirty nine o'clock, and they would go out to these projects. I was over at a house in, in Clearbrook where they were ripping up the floor and and replacing a. a uh, a uh, water heater, I believe, and then there was also some fences being built and, and some phenomenal stuff. And I told the guy, the guy's name is uh, Steve, and he, he runs an organization called uh, TOP, which stands for Teens Opposing Poverty. But I told him, I said, you can't help but be successful because you've landed on the top two commands, love the Lord your God and then love your neighbor. You're going to be successful. They're 10 years in, and it was awesome. I got to be the pastor that week. But um, I... I uh, one of the things that I did, like I said, I, you, this is part, you've probably heard me say this before, but I actually brought it with me, and normally I forget, but go on to the, uh, the, next, the next part. I, I put heaven and hell up there because I, I am afraid of the culture that has produced 
the end of our lives as the whole point of our lives. I, I don't know how to explain that. Let me try. Um, I, I think I think in our Christian culture right now, in our religious culture, our, our idea, and, and, and this isn't everybody, but this is this is kind of how I grew up, and, and, and I. And it was with good intention. So I'm not even blasting that. I just think that it's off the mark a little bit. I, I think I, when I was a kid, there was a, a, a film out called The Burning Hell Film. And I think it was great. I think that it did a good job of pointing me in the right direction. But, but I, I think it also scared me into saying a prayer that I was not ready to say. So I said a prayer, and then you guys have heard me say this. We've also, we also tell our kids not to covet, not to want, they, not to desire all these things of the world. And then our, our kicker for how we present Jesus Christ is one day you can have a home in heaven and with a big mansion and the streets are made of gold. And, and that's our kicker. And, that's, and, and, and I just want to tell you this. Christianity is not... Listen... I, this is going to blow your mind, especially if you grew up in church. Christianity is not about heaven and hell. This is awesome. I want you to get this. Your reward is not eternity in heaven. Your reward is a relationship with God right now. This is not a wait for reward. And, and I know, I, I grew up that way. We're waiting for, I can't wait till I get to heaven. I can't wait till I get to see Jesus. I can't wait till I get to walk on the streets of gold. I can't wait till I get to talk to God. Uh, duh. <laughs> I, you, you better get this. The reward. The reward for Christianity. The reward for coming to know Christ. The reward is not heaven. It is absolute. That's a byproduct. That's a great byproduct. But, but the, your heaven starts the moment. Listen, this is awesome. Your heaven starts the moment that you connect with God Almighty. Because you have hope. You have peace. You have grace. You have somebody that has power. You have somebody that has a control. Well, what does that mean? I'm going to tell you what it means. I believe heaven is a, a real place. I believe hell is a real place. But I'm going to tell you this too. I'm going to tell you if you don't know him, if you don't know him, you're also already getting a taste of hell. Because you have no hope. And you have no purpose. And some of you have been wandering around looking from church to church to church and you're looking for peace and hope and you're trying to figure this all out and you're and so you jump into these religions and you try the different churches and you try to you try to do the come up to the floor or the front and pray thing and you try to cry it out and you try to have all these feelings of salvation and let me tell you, it has nothing to do with feelings. This is what it is. I'll show you. Go ahead and pull it up. Go ahead and pull up these verses. It says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. It, it comes down to this idea that do you really believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. I know this is a, it's a cliche, but I want you to think about this. I know it's a crazy sounding story. A man came, lived a perfect life, got on a cross, they beat him up, uh, put him on a cross, and then he got up out of the grave and he did it, and he would have done it just for me. That blows my mind. But that's what we're asking you to believe. That's the birth. We'll look at the next verse here. Go ahead and pull it up. Uh, Philippians 3.10 That I may know Him in the power of His resurrection and I may share His sufferings becoming like Him in His death. And I, I was trying to look up stuff on this personal relationship thing. And, and, and what I, was, I was talking about the impact of that and what I was able to share with them is I, I, uh, I carry around when I go to speak to teenagers I carry around my, my Michael Jordan um, gold card and and I carry it around and the reason why I do it on on the back of the card if you know baseball cards or or any type of cards on the back of the cards there's stats right 
On the back of the cards, it usually tells you about the player. It usually tells you how many points they scored in their career and, and all that. And, and um, you know, I can tell you Michael Jordan's favorite shoe was the 13. I can tell you his kids' names. I can tell you his birthdays in February. I can tell you his wife's name. I can tell you. I can tell you he just got, he just had twins. I mean, I can tell you. All, I can tell you his favorite movie was Friday. I can tell you a whole bunch of stuff about Michael Jordan. I love Michael Jordan. Matter of fact, my daughter's name is Michaela Jordan. Say it right. <laughs> She's awesome. But um, how does that relate? If you ask Michael Jordan today who Andy Combs is, you know what he's going to say? I don't know. There's a verse in Matthew that goes something like this. Just because you know all my stats, just because you know all the church things, just because... On that day, it says, it says, many will say, Lord, Lord, on that day, did I not do all the stuff that church people do? Did I not, did I not even pray? Did I not even go forward and put my face on the floor? Did I not do all these miracles? Did I not, did I not do all these things in your name? And uh, some of us are just, listen, I want you to get this. Some of us are just fans of God. like Amber did this week. I'm tired of just knowing who he is. I want him to know who I am. I want a personal relationship. There's not, Listen, I'm going to tell you this. There's nothing greater in my life than knowing even when I mess up. You know, even when I mess up, there's a great comfort that comes when I get my butt kicked afterwards. Because you know, God says... I chastise those that I love. But you know what's awesome? I'm waiting for it. I mess up and I'm like, God, I'm waiting for it. And then it comes, I'm like, I'm crazy you. for it. Because yeah, I know, I know, listen, I, I know that He's pieced things together. I, I know how He's answered my prayers. I know how when I didn't have no money, somebody puts $250 on the car. I, I know how He does these things. You know what I'm saying? I know how when you don't have nothing and something shows up, you go, man, I, I was waiting. God, you you did it for me again. I know. I know how He gave us the speakers. I know how He gave us the sound system. I know how we got the camera. I know. Listen, what I'm trying to tell you is this is not a baloney uh, clip, makeup, something. There is a God that I know personally that loves me, he takes care of me, and He pursues me. And, and then even this week when I was thinking about Sandy that works here, and, and we... We rented this hotel because we didn't. We thought it was a little high, and we we thought it was a little rough, and we we weren't sure what to do. But when when Sandy comes forward at last week and walked forward, and I went, there was a there was a God that was pursuing her and allowed all the junk that I was going through and the stuff that some of you've gone through and brought us to this place so that Sandy could. There's a God that loves you and is desperately wanting a personal relationship with you. Not just for you to be a fan. Not for you to just know John 3.16 and know when His birthday is and know what the resurrection is and Easter and all that. He wants, to, he wants to know who you are. And that's awesome. Again, this is not stuff I'm... Maybe just a reminder, but this isn't stuff that you didn't know. And then I went to go on to the next one. I went to the bath, the baptism. I... Uh, I think this is very important. I put a couple of verses on here as well. Go ahead and go to them. Galatians 3.27 For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And, and uh, the baptism, it's a, it's a personal testimony. It's a, I, I, share this, I share this with people all the time. It's this. It, God, God gives us His Word and gives us His commitment with salvation like we just looked at. And the birth. You get to be brand new. That's his commitment, salvation. He says, then he says, no, no one can pull you out of my hand. I mean, you, you, you're, you're saved. You're, 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 you're his child. Baptism, the bath, birth, bath, and beyond the bath, the bath is, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have this ceremony. And I share this. I, I loved Christine way before we got married. I loved her with all my heart, and, and, and I really did. I loved her. And, I, and I, we could have gone that way. I, we, I could have loved her the rest of my life that way. But there's something very important about that ceremony, isn't there? 
when I got to stand up in all my friend in front of all my friends and family, and I got to stand up in front of my church, and I got to stand up in front of the people that love me, and I got to stand up in front of her mom and dad and her family, and I got to say, hey, this is my my public announcement that I'm going to love this woman with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I'm going to love God and I'm going to love my wife. Same way. I'm going to get I'm going to, I'm, we, we did this song from here to eternity. My friend Richie sang it. And that's what my that's that was the that was the prayer of my heart. I'm going to love my wife for eternity. And, and so there was something very important about that ceremony. So if you haven't been baptized, I'm not saying it's salvation. But what I am trying to tell you is there is something really awesome about that moment where you say, God, I am publicly saying to you, there is none other God but you. And I'm going to love you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. The next verse, go ahead and look at it. Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism into death. Like as Christ, we are raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. And... and um, that newness of life is where I got to because what does that mean? Well, there's, there should be an effort now. We get this salvation then we're going to go to the next slide and we'll get to this. Therefore, look at this. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, slander of every kind. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with perseverance the race marked before us. And, and what caught my eye on that is there is a discipline that has to be shown here. I think sometimes we expect the veil out. God, watch, watch this. God, um, if I trust you, you take all this stuff away from me. Isn't that how we think? God, I'm going to trust you with my life, but I want you to take all this stuff away from me. These are physical acts. Look, it says, rid yourselves. There, there has to be this discipline. You, I believe God can help you. That's why it says, all things through Christ. All things through Christ. But it says, I can. I can do all things through Christ. There has to be this personal part that says, I am, I am responsible for me. And this one says, you have to take some steps. I don't know what happened there, but... Uh, it, it says you, you have to take some steps. You rid yourselves. You throw off everything. So what does a bath do? It gets us clean, right? But there has to be some effort. And I'm not giving you rules to be. A, I'm not giving you rules on how you get to be get to get into heaven. How you get to know who Christ is. I'm not giving you rules. I'm just telling you that when you start to fall in love with Him and you want a deeper relationship with Him and you want to see your prayers answered, it's just like a father son relationship. If I was living in a rebellious life and I went, I went to ask my dad, "Hey, Dad, can you help me with this or that?" The, the answer is going to be no. You hear me? But if I surrender to what my dad wants me to do and, I've had, and I'm, I'm listening and obeying and I'm living for uh, the way that he desires of me and then you go to him and say, hey, uh, dad, you know, you remember as being a kid, hey, I cleaned my room, I washed the dishes, I did all this and, and can I go do this or can I have $5 or whatever it was. And that $5 doesn't go very far anymore, does it? But uh, um, then if there's this... If there's this good relationship, listen to what I'm saying. If there's this good relationship going on, wouldn't your parents be more apt to blessing you? And that's why he causes his children. I put on Facebook this week, I think it's funny how people, they have this alcohol, and this is just an example, but we have this, this alcoholism or something like that, and you hang out at a bar and you say, God, please help me. I don't want to fail. Uh -huh. There's some stuff that's at your homes right now, at our homes right now, that we fail with, and it sits right there. We've got it in a cabinet, or we've got it in a in, in a drawer, or we got it wherever, and or maybe it's some, who knows what it is, but there's some stuff that you're saying, oh God, I don't want to fail, I don't want to fail, I don't want to fail, but i got a good supply of it over here if I do. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? God, please help me, please help me, and we're... Get rid of it. Throw it away. He wants to help you, but, you, but there, there has to be this element of I can through Christ. Go ahead and do the next one. 
like I said, those two were the first two. They're, they're kind of they kind of just um, that's the that's basic Christianity, right? Get saved, get right. That's kind of it. The beyond, right? What do you do after you get saved? It, this is probably a, this is one of the, a very important question. This this is probably a question that's asked all the time. I, I've said a prayer. I asked Christ to come into my life. Uh, I'm, I'm developing this relationship with God. I'm, I'm attending church. I'm getting rid of things in my life that are are causing me problems. I'm doing these things, but now, now what? And, and so I, I put the verse First Peter two two like newborn babies craft pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up. In your salvation, don't you want to get? Don't you want to just get past this salvation thing and just get past the, the what the world sees as uh, religion? Don't you want to get deeper? There's a few things that we're going to look at here, and we're just going to go through them. But the beyond, it's kind of like this big empty, this big empty spot for most Christians. So we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what kind of a, what what does a mature disciple look like? Go into the first one. Um, hang out. <laughs> hang out. Um, I get this or see this just about every day. I, I see it every day. I, I, either somebody maybe addresses me every other day or, or at least once a week, and they say to me this, I've gone down a path because of some of the friends and people that I hang out with. I've been hanging out with some some bad people. How many of you ever heard that? How many of you ever had that? That's part of, been part of your problem. So hang out. You got to start hanging out. A mature Christian starts to hang out with mature Christians. Go ahead and pull up the verse. Look what this says here. First Corinthians fifteen thirty three says, "Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character." I'm, I'm going to tell you, not a rule. This isn't a rule. These are ways that you get in good standing. This is the this is the way that the blood. This is what maturity looks like in the Christian faith. Okay, you start hanging around with people. Listen, there are other people. I just told my wife. I said sometimes I can't hang around with so and so because they just bring me down. I, I don't like having a bad day. There are some people on Facebook that I, I when I see that they've got something posted, it's like get past that real fast. They're gonna have me depressed. <laughs> Right? Because what you hear, listen, what you hear, <laughs> we've, we've talked about this before, uh, you know, if someone says, hey, he looks like you've lost weight, man, my day gets a whole lot better. <laughs> if someone says that you had trouble sitting down or getting through that doorway, their words, I was wearing all red the other day, King's Dominion, red t-shirt, my, my son had to go to the bathroom, I had to change it, so I just had my red t-shirt on, my red short, and I'm walking away, and my cousin goes, hey, Kool-Aid. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, you hear these things, <laughs> you, you, what you hear, people that you're around, right? You can hang around some people. You can be on the top of your game having a great day and you show up maybe in a family reunion or something. I don't know. You show up around some people and then all of a sudden everything changes because, because bad company corrupts good character. I'm going to say this. Most of the time that you were, if you were lost and you were involved in some stuff, you had a good friend that was right there in the middle. Or a bad friend that was right there in the middle. <laughs> right? Yeah, amen. Or you end up with a group of people. My dad used to say this, he said, watch these bad kids, we're going to take them to camp. Watch how the bad kids all find each other. Yeah. <laughs> right? I took a group down to Tennessee, and, and uh, I had a couple knuckleheads on my group, and, and um, all of a sudden they came back in, this whole group, this, not even our players, they came back in with these boxes of snacks, uh, from the cafeteria. They went, went down and robbed the cafeteria of all of them. So I ate a couple and then told them to take them back. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Probably not. But uh, we start, if we hang around bad, if we start hanging around bad influences, they'll start, you'll start making choices that you don't normally make. Listen to how people got on, on drugs. Sit down and talk with somebody that's come out of that. Listen to how somebody said, a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a relative said, hey, you know, why don't you just try this? 
You're, you have an influence. People have an influence. So bad, bad company corrupts good character. Going to the next one. Look at this though. It says Ecclesiastes 4, 9 and 10. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity on anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Man, you know what sometimes we do? We sometimes we isolate ourselves and don't want anybody to help us. This says, hey, find that person. Find that group of people. I believe it's church. I believe it's maybe some of the, some of the people in here. Maybe it's a husband, wife. I believe you've got to get around some people that will speak life into you. That will tell you, hey, that you know that was great. You, you're doing a great job, and, and people that will tell you the truth too. Hey, you kind of messed up there, but let's move forward. And I believe you've got to be around these people so that when you do fall, someone is there to help you get back up and get going. You got to be around those people. You not only do you have to be around those people, you need to be that person. Too many times we get around, start to gossip, and we start talking a bad about. You know what? Um, what, if, what if our answer is just, I'm going to trust you. Or you should trust them. Go on to the next one. So that was uh, hang out. The next one. I don't know what happened there. Go ahead to the next one. Next. Are we going backwards? All right. Shout out. Shout out. So we hang out and we shout out. And this is to do with our praise. And you know what scripture says? And this bothers me. This has always bothered me. This has bothered me since I was a kid because there's there, there, there's a, this, uh, this idea that um, uh, we're supposed to be excited about our faith and then people aren't excited about their faith and, and, and that doesn't comprehend to me because I, again like I said I know what he's done for me I know how he's blessed me I know how he's taken care of me I know what he's done for my family I know I know these things so when it's time for me to worship there's something inside of me that says hey it's time to worship and, and what I can't stand as a matter of fact I'm, I'm probably too critical on this I, I would watch these pastors come in and, and speak at the church they sit up in the front row and, and the worship would be going and I'd watch the pastor stand there with his mouth shut and his arms folded and it, and it bothers me it bothers me because if you know him he's worthy to be praised Amen. and look at the verse here it says uh, it says oh come let us sing to the Lord look it says sing I know you might not think that you're a singer but I know I know that there's probably a song stuck in your head right now it's in all of us. There's this. You sing whatever you hear, whether it's the uh, uh, jingle from a commercial or whatever it is, but you sing. So it, it, I want you to get this. Look, it says, sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock. Look at the words that it's using, the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to Him with songs of praise. For the Lord is great, is a great God and a great King above all gods. And in His hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are also. The sea is His, for He made it and His hands formed the dry land. There is something to be worshipped for our God. There is something to praise Him about. So how would you worship? Go ahead and pull up the next one. Look what it says here. Hebrews 13, 15. Uh, Through Him, then let us continually offer up, look what it says, a sacrifice. I know you might not feel like it's time to worship. I know you might not feel like you can sing. or you, It doesn't make any difference. That's why the word sacrifice is there. I heard this this week. It was awesome. It was about worship, and this guy said, "Hey, uh, I got tired of going to my 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 uh, uh, congregation, saying, hey, what did you think of worship? What did you think of the music today?'" And then he said, "All of a sudden, it hit me. It was not what did right. you think of the worship? What did you think of the music today? It is what did you think of the worship? What did you think of the music today?" And, and this idea that there's a a, a a a a performer, and then there's an audience, and then there's God is the wrong way of saying this. Look, there is God, there is a leader, and there is the performers. It's not about you. You have the opportunity. It said, listen, you better get this. It says, come into His presence with singing. You can come into His presence with worship. There, there's this awesome God. It bothers me to watch people just stand and not worship. I, I'm not saying you have to have your hand up. I'm not even saying that you need to be singing. But there better be an attitude of worship if you're planning on getting into His presence. Amen. That's right. Amen. Does that make sense? Yep. Amen. 
That's maturity in your Christian faith. And, and I'll just say this. He's worthy, right? He's worthy of our praise. This, this don't just happen before a church service either. Let's see if that... I'm not just talking about the worship part of our church. There should be worship right now. He's worthy. We can pull up the next one so we, we hang out, we shout out, and we go out. Right? Go on to the next one. Look what it says. It says, Mark 16, 15, He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. And, and so, so there's an attitude of, Hey, yesterday I, got to, I was wearing my, my church doesn't care um, uh, shirt. And I got to speak to 11 people yesterday about the Lord. Amen. Just from them asking about my t-shirt. You've got to find these opportunities to get out. And, and, and I put on Facebook this week, and you're going to say that a lot, because I, I think it's a great forum to tell people about stuff. And I, I, I had this birthed in me a few years ago, this reach my world philosophy, and, and I hope we can pull it off someday. Because I, I on, on Wednesday nights, I get with a group of guys, and we play basketball, and, and, and I've kind of been a, a, a mentor type person to them. And when they're in trouble, they call me, and we have prayer, and, and I've been able to talk to them about the Lord. And, and, and it's become my world, my world. The people that I get to reach right in my world is, is this group of guys that I meet with. And then I was thinking, why not do that with with your skills? If you if you uh, if you do karate, why not find a spot to do karate and bring people? Out? If you watch if you watch television, why not why not do a Super Bowl party and you give the gospel out at the Super Bowl on Monday nights or whatever? If you play golf, why not rent the party room over and Apple and go play some holes at the par three and then take the guys in and tell them about? Why not? Why can't we do this? Why can't we just take these little gifts and passions that God's given us? Why can't we use all those little simple things that we think are insignificant and God's given them to you as a gift and a passion and say, I'm going to use this gift and passion to tell people about Jesus. I'm going to be able to reach my world that way. Wouldn't that be cool? Amen. I heard about a dog trainer that started doing free dog training as a ministry. She's a multi-millionaire now. People just started coming. All she did is start selling products, but people started coming. She was doing free things, and then she was telling them, giving the gospel at, at free dog at free dog training. She threw them a dog training thing into a ministry where she reaches people with Jesus, and, and God's blessed her for it. Go on to the next one for me. Oh, go back. I'm sorry. Go back. Acts four twenty. Look at this. I, 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 this is my favorite verse. As for us, this is Peter was being told he needed to shut up and quit telling people about Jesus. Peter's response is this. As for us, we cannot help but speaking about what we have seen and heard. You, you have a story to share. If you, listen, if you know him, you have a story to share. You spend any time with him. You know I, you know the people. There was there, my buddy Joe Kepler. If you ever hung out with him, it would turn into a conversation about the goodness and greatness of God. I'm just telling you, that's what happened. You ever been around those people? They can't help you. It don't make any difference where the conversation starts. It's going to end up on Jesus. Amen. You know why? They can't help but speaking about the things that they've seen and heard. They got a story to tell. They're, there's some stories that we, we I love the testimonies here because there's some stories to be told. People, you guys have changed. Some of you've been changed drastically. And there's there's people. Listen, uh, Amber said this. Is what Amber said to me this week. She said, "You know what the story, the, the service that got to me was when people from the crowd got up and said how God had changed their life, and it made sense to her that her life could be changed. If you are just sitting with your mouth shut, somebody is not hearing, and somebody's just going to be going on the same path." Right now, if you get up and share Jesus, say, just tell what He did for you. Amen. You don't have to be a super theologian or know all the ins and outs of Scripture. And I'm, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be digging into that. I'm just telling you, if He changed you, that's enough. That makes sense. Amen. Your story means the world to somebody else. Now you can go on to the next one. Live out. Live it out. So we hang out, we shout out, 
What was the last one? I can't remember. We go out, and now we live out. Right? Go ahead and pull up the, the verses. 2 Peter 3.18, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. You, you've got to grow, right? Get closer to Him. Fall in love with Him. Move towards Him. That means we don't set a time limit on how we're going to pray. We don't set a passage limit on... <laughs> just uh, just imagine that with your relationship with your husband or wife. You've got five minutes to <laughs> You're done. <laughs> That's not going to work. That means when it's time to talk to him, you ever get in those conversations with a, uh, your husband or wife and they just you just talk and talk and talk and um, talk about things, you talk about what you're going through, you talk about the battles, you talk about the victories, you talk about your kids. That's, that's the talks. Not because we did our spiritual duty this week. Because God, I'm in trouble this week. Or God, I just want to tell you I love you today. Or I just want you to know I am thankful for what you did for me today. And, and you, you start having me. You, that's why Scripture says pray without ceasing. It's not supposed to be a, a set time that I'm going to pray for 45 minutes and, and then I'm going to go do something. I'm going to read 12 passages of Scripture. It's, it's not that at all. It's, it's when you need Him. He's there and He needs you. You're there. So we grow. Go ahead and pull on the next one. It says James 1.22. Do not merely, look at this, do not merely listen to the Word and so deceive yourselves. Look at that last part. Do what it says. Man, we need you to get involved. We need help getting out into the world. We need help sharing the God. We need help with the children's ministries. We need help with the women's ministry. We need help with the men's ministry. We need help starting new ministries. The world, you know what the world is sick of? They're sick of watching a bunch of people show up to church on Sundays and do nothing on Mondays. That's right. And I don't know what that is to you. I don't know what that means. I'm not saying that you guys spend every waking hour on church ministry. Like I said, do something you do passionately. We started, we did. Christine and I started Monday Night Football a long time uh, back when we were uh, a little younger. And we were we would do college nights. And we would invite all the college kids over much Monday Night Football. And we'd fellowship. And that's where we would talk about the Lord in front of some college kids. We just took something as simple as a football game and turned it into a ministry. You can do these things. These are practical. I show you all about the. There was a kid. There was a kid uh, from Manassas, and he, he. What he did was he wrote everybody every year from his freshman year. He wrote everybody a birthday card in his entire class. I don't know. It was like three hundred kids in this class. Every every kid got a birthday card with an invitation to church from his freshman year all the way to his senior year. By the time he graduated, every single every single person in his class had either attended church. Or, uh, or at least visited at least once by the time he graduated. Amen. That's practical Christianity. Right? Go on to the uh, next one for me. Uh-oh. <laughs> Nobody likes this. I'm going to tell you this real quick. There was a... Uh, um, Joe told me this joke. I, I'm probably going to mess it up. But there was a $10 bill and a $20 bill and a hundred dollar bill that all died. And they went to heaven. And when they got to heaven and, and uh, Peter came to the gates and said to the ten dollar bill, oh yes, you, you come ahead. Uh, you are definitely welcome into heaven. So the ten dollar bill walked into heaven. He turned around and saw the twenty dollar bill and he said, oh, oh, it's good to see you. Um, yes, you are welcome into heaven. Come on in. And, and then he turned around and, and the hundred dollar bill started to walk in. He said, wait, wait, you're not allowed here. I've never even seen you in church. <laughs> Theologically, that's way off. But, <laughs> but he got a laugh. But um, the, the, 
DiBiase said this last week. He was talking about the leftovers. <laughs> A statistic went out. There was two places that you were most likely to find $1 bills. Number one was church. Number two was a strip joint. You, you know what people do and it's going to happen. I mean, I understand. People go, well, what have I got in my pocket? And it becomes a, well, and, and I'm not going to be a pastor that's begging for money. I'm not going to do that. I'm just tell you, spiritually mature uh, Christian has a plan set out on how much they're going to give every week or every month or every year. There's a plan set out and they try to do their best to get to that. And it's not, you know what it's for? It's not for, it's not for my pockets. It's not for, uh, it, 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 the idea is that we have to do a great job and, and a really good job of showing you what the money is going to, how we enter the community and how we are reaching the lost and how we are taking care of the poor and the sick and the fathers and how we're using our bus and how we're training, you know, all these different things. And, and that's important for us because that, obviously you don't want to just give for no reason, but, but you do give. And there's, there's, there's these couple of verses I want to show you. Go ahead and pull them up. Acts 20, 35, and all things I've shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the word of the Lord, just how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. we got to quit giving God leftovers. I, I've seen it. You guys have seen it. I'm, I'm not saying I'm watching this. But, you got, but I, I've done it. Uh, what do I got in my pocket? I'm at, you know, this, this is what I'm giving this week. Whatever I didn't spend it to fair last night, you can have it. Woo! Again, how would how would that go with your relationship with a husband or wife? Oh, yeah, your whatever I got left. Those things just don't work. Go ahead and pull up the next one. It says, uh, the point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. And, and that's, listen, I'm not just saying stuff because I'm the pastor and we try to build a new church, new school. I, this is for your own personal well-being. If you invest in people, people will invest in you. If you try to take care of some people, if you, I, you my dad used to love, take us when we were kids. We would go to people's houses that had dirt floors, and we would give turkeys and, and presents and all kinds of things. And what, what? There's a blessing when you do something for somebody that can't repay. You. Scripture says that. Figure out how you can help. I, I'm not even going to tell you you've got to give to the church. If, maybe that's a scary thing right now. Try this. Try this. Go find somebody that needs whatever you would tithe or give normally. Go find somebody downtown that needs it. If you want to try it without the politics of the church, just start giving to the poor and the fatherless. Go start with that. We don't need we don't need your money. We're going to God's going to take care of us regardless. I'm just going to tell you if you'll start giving, if you'll start taking care of the poor, the sick, the fatherless, uh, God's going to bless you. And if you if you can't start with giving it to the church, that's fine. Start with a neighbor. Christine and I we've done this a couple of times. We've taken our time and said, you know what, this is God's money, but God is telling us that you need it. See, it's not about it's not about this. Uh, it, it's about what God's worthy of. Go on to the last one, and we're, we'll stop here. This is it. Reach out. Go to the verses. I want to get through. First Peter 4.10. Look what it says. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another. As good stewards of God's grace. All this practical Christianity, I'm telling you, you've got a gift. I, I might, you might not know what it is. I might not know what it is. I, I, I'm just telling you, um, God birthed in me a long time ago that um, I was supposed to reach my, my, my city. And then how he told me I was going to do it, he said, I'm going to do it by basketball. And I, I literally walked forward one, uh, one day and I put a basketball up in the front of the sanctuary and said, God, I'm giving you this basketball. You do with it what you want to do with it. And I'm not, I'm not bragging about my son. I'm just telling you, when you start giving things to God, he gives it back in abundance. And, and I was, over the last few years, probably the last eight to ten years, I've been able to run basketball leagues and basketball tournaments and seen hundreds of, hundreds of my friends come to church and be here. I've seen hundreds come forward. I, I was able to stand one night with probably 500, 600 people in the gym and, and give a gospel presentation. We did an all-night basketball. I'm just telling you, God just let me use basketball. Something, 
I'm, I'm not worthy. I'm not the smartest man. I'm not the most educated person even in the Scriptures. I'm, I'm just not that guy. I don't know how to do a lot of things. So I, I told you guys before, when, when we got married, my wife got a toolkit. I didn't even get a toolkit. She got it. was pink. I promise. That's the God's honest truth. She got a pink toolkit because I don't have to do anything. What God told me that I was capable of doing, He said, you can take a basketball because you like playing basketball and you like to tell people about Jesus. You can't help but talk about the things that you see in her. Why don't you take those two things and put them together and then let me put it together? You've been given a gift. I don't know what it is. I'm just telling you, you've got a passion or something inside of it. Maybe it's helping. Maybe it's serving. Maybe it's praying. Maybe it's giving. Maybe maybe it's just serving the neighbor. Maybe it's the way that you communicate. Maybe you have a job. Maybe you've got some type of skill that you can teach. Maybe there's maybe there's people at your work that, that need to hear that. Maybe you can take pizza to the people at your work and have a party one day and just say, I'm doing this because Christ loved me and I'm, I'm trying to love you and that's why I'm doing it. There's a simple practical ways of sharing Jesus with people if we'll just take the time to, to do what we've been given. Use what we've been given. Go ahead and pull up the last one. Matthew 25, 40, the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Man, God has been kicking my butt on this one. Who are the least of these? I, I don't know who it is to you. I know who it is to me. I, I know when I see them. It, it's hard enough. Isn't it hard enough even to just say hello to them? Let's be honest. You see somebody you think's weird or has got something physically wrong. Or... And then to read this passage of Scripture, maybe they're poor, maybe they don't have anything. Maybe they're suffering. And then we read this passage of Scripture. I want to reach out. I want to hang out, live out, shout out, go out, give out, reach out. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Start with this. When your head's bowed your eyes, facing Pastor, I need to know this, God. I need the brand new. And the only way I can get the brand new is to sacrifice all of me. And I'm not real sure how to do that, but this is what Scripture says to do. It says, it says you confess, you tell him who you are, you tell him how you messed up. And then you believe in him with all your heart. And it says that you become a Christian. It says that you'll be saved. You'll become a disciple. You'll start the journey. But it starts with repenting and confessing. It starts with that belief. Yeah, I'm going to trust you. If, if today is your day to do that, I don't care how long you've been in church. Send you what I'm really going to get this personal relationship thing down. I'm really going to know him. If you just prayed something similar to that, would you just look up at me so that I know? I don't want to miss anybody. If you prayed that, don't let me miss you. Amen. Say, Pastor, I, uh, I used to. I used to be growing. I used to be involved. I used to be getting into deeper and deeper and deeper, but I've strayed away and... and um, I gotta start growing again. There's some things that were said today, there's some things I know that I need to correct, I need to start doing, I need to get back to doing. I need to start developing this relationship with God. And say, Pastor, today I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna recommit to that. If that's you, would you just look up? Amen, praise the Lord. Amen, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And let's bow for prayer and then uh, let's go out of here celebrating. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much for your word. God, convict us. God, let us grow up. 
God, I personally, in my own heart, I'm trying to figure out how to love the least of these because I want to treat you that way. So God, give me opportunities this week to, to love on people, to care about people. God, when it's worship time, I pray that I'm, I can't shut up about you. God, I pray that I'm bold enough to tell somebody about you this week. God, I pray that I walk away from people that are uh, discouraging. God, I put myself around people that are encouraging. Lord, we just ask for your presence to come over us this week as we try to do this. Lord, we know that we can't do any other without you, Lord. So I pray that we surrender ourselves to you. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You're dismissed. <coughs>